Hey, how's it going? Todd with Shutterstock here, and in today's video, can you make your iPhone look like an Ari Alexa? The answer is no, no you cannot. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, one of the most common questions that I get asked by my clients is, will this camera match with another one? And my answer to that is always kind of like, well, it just depends on what you mean. So can you make like an A6500 look like an Alexa? And my answer to that is no, you can't. It, they're two different cameras. That's why the Alexa is the Alexa and the A6500 is the A6500. Pretty much any camera there is, you can color match one camera to another. And the difference there is can you put them in an edit next to each other and it won't be super jarring for the audience. And nowadays, color matching two cameras is extremely easy, especially now that most cameras have a log color picture profile. You can get way more depth and color information in what you record. Now, the two cameras that I own that I am commonly using in a interview type scenario where I have both of them rolling at the same time and you're cutting between the two is I have an A7S II and a Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K, not the pro version, I bought it like a month before they came out with the Pro. So I'm gonna show you my techniques for color matching two different cameras. Now I'm gonna show you in Premiere, but these techniques are pretty universal. You can do them in Final Cut or obviously DaVinci, pretty much any editing software that has color correction tools built into it. Now, right off the bat, I hope this is obvious to all of you, but you just have to make sure your settings match from camera to camera. You always want your white balance to match from camera to camera. That's just setting you up with a much easier road ahead later on in post. All right, so here I am now in Premiere and we're gonna, we're gonna do three different shots. I'm just gonna show you how I would do it kind of by eye. So one thing is it's really hard to color match two cameras when you have to look at them this way where it's just kind of one shot at a time and you just have to hop back and forth. So luckily, pretty recently, Premiere has added a really, really nice thing called comparison view. So all you gotta do to get to your comparison view is click on this little wrench right here and we're gonna drop that down and boom, right there, we have comparison view. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us two panes where we can see the images just right next to each other. So right now we're looking at the same shot twice, the same moment in time, but right here you have this little slider. We can actually just move that down and get to our second shot. Right off the bat, we can see we have quite a few differences between these two images. Now this, this image on the right here, that's coming from an A7S II and then the image on the left here is coming from my Ursa. So you can see pretty much right off the bat the differences that we're kind of known for with these two camera systems. This is looking a little greenish blue and this is looking a little bit pink. But what we can do is just grab a Lumetri effect. So I'm gonna click down here in effects and I like to do it this way. You can go into the Lumetri panel itself but I like to just do it in the effect controls panel. But I'm gonna go ahead and drag the Lumetri to the first shot which is our A7S II shot. I always like to kind of have the main shot be the baseline for the color. So in this case, my Ursa shot is the main shot. So I'm gonna use it as my baseline. So I'm gonna to try to match the A7S footage to the Ursa footage. So obviously if you look between the two, this one is much lower contrast. So S-Log2 is kind of known for being really, really, really flat. So we're gonna to go to the effect controls here and we're gonna to go to our Lumetri color effect. And I'm gonna start by dropping down curves here and we're gonna just kind of scroll down. And what I'm gonna to try to do is just using my eye, just try to match the contrast as best as I can. So I'm gonna start here on the lower end of the curve and we're just gonna pull this down. One great spot to kind of look for contrast is this black square right here. So we're gonna see if we can't match the darkness of that black square. And I feel like right about there, we've pretty much got it. Maybe a little bit darker, something like that looks good to me. And then we're gonna go to the highlights and just see if we can't sort of match the highlights a little bit there too. And honestly, I think, I think that'll be pretty close. I'm gonna drop these darks down just a little bit more. Okay, so now, like I said, we're gonna look at color temperature. So this shot is looking quite a bit bluer than this one. So we can come up here in the Lumetri color tab and we're gonna go to basic correction, and just drop that down. And here we have a temperature option. So I'm gonna go here and let's just try adding something like 20. Okay, so now we're quite a bit oranger. It's matching a little bit more, but I don't think we need that much. I think we can, let's try something like 12. 
and that's looking pretty good for me. As you can see, this is looking a little bit yellow. So tint is generally always gonna be your green or magenta shift in your image. So I'm gonna go over here to tint, and let's just put that at somewhere like 10. Okay, that's obviously too much. Let's try six. So now it's starting to match, I think we even a little bit less. Let's try three. And three and a half. So that's what it, yep. See now look, they're looking very, very similar. And so now we can color correct the whole thing on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this new item button right here and I'm gonna go to adjustment layer. I'm gonna hit okay. And we can just drag that right down on top of our sequence here. And I'm just gonna add a Lumetri color effect to that adjustment layer. And we're gonna go to the creative tab and I'm just gonna throw a lookup table on top of the whole thing. And if you don't know what a lookup table is, uh, just go ahead and watch this tutorial right here. We'll tell you all about it. But I'm gonna go to browse and I'm just gonna pick a lookup table that I like. And in the comparison view, there's actually a couple other ways you can look. You can look at a vertical split and that's where you can just kinda drag this little line across and make sure your shots match. And as you can see, that matches pretty well. You can also do a top-down view, just like that. And so now once you have your shots matched to your liking, you can just click on this little wrench right here and go back to composite video. And this is gonna be your main video. So let's see how well those cut. Okay, so here we have a shot of Logan. And this is kind of the same setup. We got the Ursa shot here. It's the front on shot. And then this side shot is gonna be your A7S shot. So let's open that up in the comparison view. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag a Lumetri onto that clip. And visually with the curves, I'm going to just try to match it. I think we definitely need some more contrast. Something like that, but we'll bring the brights back up again, somewhere right around there. So now recently with Premiere, not only do we have the comparison view, but we also have this button that says apply match. And what that's gonna do is it's automatically gonna look at your reference point. So this image here in your comparison view, and it's going to try to match the color of whatever that reference point looks like to your new shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hit apply match. And so there we go. So obviously that's not quite the right look, but in my opinion, what you use this for is to get a reference point as to what the computer is seeing in terms of the differences in skin tones. But what we can do is actually take that and kind of use that as a starting point. So I'm gonna take these midtones here, which it shifted quite a bit towards the orange, just bring it back down a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back up to curves. I like to use curves. It, to me, it feels more kind of tactile, like I can just sort of feel it as I go. So I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast in. And I'm gonna go to this red channel. And let's just see, I bet we don't have to pull this down very much for it to match. So boom, right there. I pulled that red down just even the slightest little bit. So it did need some more of that red in it to match better. So now if you look between the two shots, let's see. That actually matches really well now. So what I find with that apply match button, you're very rarely going to get a perfect match just by hitting the button, but it does give you a good starting point to work from. And so just to prove my point that I think any two cameras can be matched in post, with this shot, I shot this with my iPhone. And then with this shot is my Ursa. So let's see if we can get an iPhone to match an Ursa. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and match the Ursa to the iPhone. I think that's gonna be a little bit easier to do. So I'm gonna drag Lumetri to the Ursa shot and I'm gonna go to curves and obviously we need quite a bit more contrast. So I'm gonna bring the contrast to kind of match the iPhone shot. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the match button on this one. So I'm gonna go to the color wheels and match tab and hit apply match. There we go. So it gave us a little bit more contrast, made it a little bit bluer. Then I think we need to add a little bit more saturation. Let's see, let's try 120. And those actually match pretty well. So nowadays with all cameras having some form of log picture profile where you have a lot more color to work with in post, it's getting a whole lot easier to match two different cameras. But hopefully some of these techniques and especially the new comparison viewer and Premiere will help you match your cameras together and create a more cohesive piece. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll see you guys next time.